actually heading back with Johnny Thorpe, some of the old footage that we did with Beaver Under the Ice. Uh, he's going to show you the methods and techniques that he uses with, uh, you know, trapping beaver in, in really thick ice conditions. And, and, you know, a lot of times different people have different views when it comes how to do things and the methods that you use. His under ice beaver trapping uh, is pretty much top shelf. And if you're in any climate that you're trapping beaver under the ice, I pay particular attention to how he actually attaches the bait to the trap as his method is second to none. It was just enjoyable being out there with him, filming this and, and reminiscing as I was re-editing this footage uh, of that time was just, you know, brings back all those memories. So I think you're gonna enjoy the show a lot. Okay, I'm Johnny Thorpe and uh, we're here in the Adirondacks and, and I'm up here with, uh, Alan Prost is up here with me and uh, doing the filming and uh, we don't have many beaver to show you that we got a bunch of beaver that we took earlier in the fall but we just started trapping through the ice now so all our open water sets have been pulled up for several weeks and uh, we just started setting traps today so I don't know how many beaver we're going to have to show you actual catches pulling them out because uh, the uh, ice just formed and usually the first trip or so around the, the uh, line doesn't produce too many beaver when the ice is first forming like this because all our feed piles are pretty new and the beaver was still putting up feed piles here as little as 10 days ago, 10 or 14 days ago. So, uh, but we're gonna go through the motions here. We're gonna show you how we set conner bears and use bait sets through the ice. Show you how we set bank dens and show you a few little tricks that uh, most people haven't shown you in beaver videos. And in fact, I don't know of any other beaver, beaver video that's been made in recent times about trapping beaver through the ice. There's a bait of conner bear here. I think we've already I told you last night how to bait a conner bear. The uh, baker jaws of one, I should say. Now we're just using these wires to even it up so it hangs level. So that's good enough. She's off maybe an inch. That's tolerable. And when you set these, we, we set them at home. We don't have to mess around any more than we want after because we're traveling we're putting out a lot of traps in the day anything can save them time is a plus I personally bait all my kind of bears on the bottom on the bottom jaw uh, my partner Eddie he baits he's got one of those those things that clip over the bottom and screw the bait in he likes those and personally I prefer the, this way myself but they both work Always set your trigger way over on the side, just as far over as you can. Far enough in so it won't uh, interfere with your jaw. Make sure these dogs are off. And always remember to check them dogs, make sure they're off in there. Because regardless how many kind of bears you set, sooner or later you're gonna miss one. It sets way over, way over to the side like that. If you set it dead center, you're gonna miss a be big beaver once in a while. You hit him in the head sometimes, you kill him. That sucker goes right down in, drop it in there like that. That's it. I like to move it over one side a little bit so I can run this popple pole in. And when a beaver comes in to cut this popple pole, you'll take the bait on the conner bear first because it's smaller. You don't have to cut it off. When a beaver comes into one of these sets, he don't grab the bait and pull back on it. He actually grabs a bait, he tucks it underneath his belly and goes through your conner bear. So remember this if you, if somebody tells you to bait trickers, a lot of guys will say, I've seen a lot of illustrations where a guy turns his trickers upside down, bend them out, and bait the trigger. Well, I'm guarantee you, and listen to me when I tell you this, you're gonna lose a lot of beaver. You're gonna lose a lot of beaver because first of all, the weight of that extra weight of that bait on the trigger makes it very, very touchy. And a lot of times the beaver will just swim by it and just the wake of it will spring your trap. You don't need that. You don't want to make any sprung traps. Now if you want to stay in beaver business. This pole goes right down beside the right beside your conibear, just like that. Simple as that. 
when the beaver comes into it, he's not going to cut off your pole. First thing he's going to do is take the bait on your on your trap because it's smaller and it's more convenient for him. If you cut it open and you see your pole's cut off, you're going to have another beaver in the, in, the, in your trap because that pole was cut off by the second beaver that came in, not the first one. Trust me on this. Make damn sure, damn sure you tag all these traps on the pole up, up on top of the ice. Then you've got no reason, the game warden's got no reason to pull your trap up to see if you got it tagged or anything. You save yourself a lot of grief. I have had a lot of guys say, oh, damn game over and they pulled my traps up. Just see what they say, well, tag them on top. You know, then you got no reason to, to do that. That hole will freeze back in there. Not, the weather's warming up a little bit right now, and I'm not really worried about that hole freezing up. I've already taken three beaver out of this colony. I think there's two more left. Next one I take will probably be a male, and the female will still be left. She's, she's my money in the bank. I never take the female. Never take the last one out of the colony. Yeah, well, that's it. It's as simple as that. I can't make it any more difficult. We take, take a piece of popple about this big or maybe a little bigger, or if it's any smaller than that, use a couple of pieces, a couple of sticks. You cut these about 10 and a half inches long, or ten, about, about 11 inches long. So you got about a half inch sticks out on both sides of the jaws. And uh, we'll take those and shave them up here around the ends a little bit. Kind of gives us a little bright stuff for a beaver to see. A beaver has very, very poor eyesight. That's the first thing you got to realize. They have terrible eyesight, especially under ice. I actually think they got to be within three foot of a piece of bait before they can see it. And this makes a little bit more eye appeal, appeal for a beaver underneath the ice. Take these little nubs that you got there and just clip them off like that. Now they can see that bait a little bit better. Take your knife and scrape the middle of it a little bit. And don't scrape it down to the white now. Just that green. Just let that green show through there. Now you got something that's got a little eye appeal to it. So we take this, put it on there like that. Take a little tie wire and uh, you can fasten these. I like to take three ties on them and then I got that wire where I want it. Take a run the, the wire underneath your jaw up over the bait and pull it down or like this on both ends. And do that on both corners. Then you're, what we're trying to do is keep that bait from slipping below the jaws. We want the bait actually inside the jaws when we set the trap. If it is inside, inside the jaws, it's on the bottom, you're going to have some misses. There's all different kinds of ways to use these traps. Okay, that's all you need to do. Now when we set that, this bait actually sets between the jaws like that. Okay. These springs, we bend all the way up like that. I'm going to leave the safeties on them there because we're not actually setting the trap. I'll leave that safety on too. The trap gets set up like this. The trigger now, pay attention, the trigger never goes in the center. If you put it in the center, you're going to have some misses. You're going to have some beaver with headaches. You don't want that. Set that sucker way over on the side, just as far as you can get it. Even take and squeeze it together. Get it way over on the side like that. This is one of the big secrets of this set. Trust me on this. We've taken thousands of beaver with these traps through the ice over the years. Now when a beaver comes up to that, he doesn't grab the bait. You can see the bait is inside the jaws. You don't want it on the outside, you want it on the inside. There's all different kinds of ways you can bait kind of bears and make them work. But trust me, this is about the quickest and the most surefire way you'll have the least amount of messes. Trust me on this. I don't think there's anybody who's studying more kind of bears under the ice at different ways than I have. And this is the old standby. It probably killed more beaver than anything else. 
Uh, some guys call this a swing and Susie. I don't know where they get that name from. I call it the hanging bait set and I invented it. But that's as simple as we use. This is what the uh, under ice set we use with the Conna Bear most times. It's quick, it's fast, it's easy. It's it. When he comes in, you take that small bait first. But uh, when he does, he's got to hold himself down to cut, he, cut off the bait. And the first thing he does is grab anything that's available to hold on to while he cuts the bait off. And if, you've got, if you haven't got a trap or both jaws locked down, sometimes you'll grab the jaw and you'll pull up on it and then you've got a sprung trap and you've got a smart beaver. So that's why I like these 750s because both jaws are locked down. That's the only reason. And this is a plus if you use them pole sets for beaver. And you don't have to have a pole that runs all the way to the bottom. In fact, you're probably better off if you don't. As long as you got it down a foot or so below the bottom of the ice, you're in business. Because the beaver working these poles, they're usually working underneath, just underneath the surface of the ice. They usually aren't on the bottom, unless you're in a run. Uh, another thing I want to emphasize too, in the old days, a lot of guys used to put in pole sets and then never used, bothered to use a dead man. And they say, oh, the pole's going to freeze in anyway. And that's true. But if you put in enough of them, if you trap enough beaver, sooner or later you're going to have a beaver come along just before that ice freezes up and it's going to take your whole rigging down under the ice. So be sure you use a dead man. Remember that. It's going to cost you if you don't, sooner or later. You'll notice how I use a long chain. I got them wired in the bottom where they'll break loose. I'll take that whole platform off from there when I catch it. I wrap that chain around my pole and tie it off to the dead man. Take a good wrap around it. You want to keep that beaver down in the water. Because if you've got late conditions where a beaver can float up in the hole, sometimes you'll freeze in the hole, keep him down underneath the surface of the water. And then you're going to cut your beaver all to hell trying to chop him out if his back is froze up in the surface of the ice. Remember that. And this we put in just about like that. Set it right down in. Run it out on about a 45. You don't want to fit in there. Take you pack a little less snow around it. It'll set there pretty good. There you go. like that we're in business. It's a good quick and as far as I'm concerned it's probably the best way to, that I've ever found to make a, a pole set. They, they won't replace a ton of bear but I'll guarantee you there's thousands upon thousands of beaver caught with them that were found before it was a ton of bear. And there's still a place for them today. This is the type I used to have the best luck with when it's trapping up in Canada through the ice. And I'm not a a snare man per se. I, I really not. I have caught a lot of beaver with snares in open water and I've caught a lot of them under the ice too but I'm not an expert on it. But I experimented with quite a few different sets and I came up with this one. I think I have as much luck with this one as any of them. Now uh, I like to use a, a piece of popple and, and if you're going to use a piece of popple, green popple, I peel it down where the beaver won't start notching out with you or you can use a dead stick. This is actually your bait stick here. This is what the beaver is going to go for, this piece of green popple right here. If you're trapping in mucky water where you can't really see what you're doing, you can't see down in the water and you're putting them in your feed pile, a lot of times you're just hanging the snares there. You'll hit some brush when you're going down or flip your snare up around there and they hang up on the brush and you really don't know it if you can't see what you're doing. So one little trick here that a friend of mine showed me not long ago and I thought it was neater than hell. When a uh, beaver comes in, he'll swim and he'll grab the stick to take that small stick. But instead of worrying about him catching on the brush pile or something, just take your knife right there and just peel a little bit of bark back right there and take that sucker and hook it right there into that bark. Take that, you want about six inch loop on that, just like that, about six inches. Take and hook that one in, just like that. And when a beaver comes in, he'll grab that stick with his feet. He'll actually try to swim through it. He won't try to cut it off right there. He'll try to swim through it. He'll try to swim through it when, so he's got his head all the way in there. Now you've got something. You can put it down in. You can stick it in the brush. You won't fire your, your uh, loop. It's a simple, fast way, and uh, I've had pretty good luck with it for beaver. And uh, it still won't replace a conibear, in my opinion. But... There, there's a place for them if you, 
if you find they're legal. And always, 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 any of these sets, I always use an upright sticking up out of the ice. I always put my tag right here. Uh, too many guys don't put a tag on their traps above the ice. And then they're wondering or complaining all the time because a game warden's chopping their setup to see if their trap is tagged. Well, when you've got an upright like this or a pole, you got your tag up here, he's got no excuse to trap, ch uh, chop a hole there and pull your trap up to check it. So you save yourself a lot of grief. A little warmer here than it is when I was up there filming this with Johnny out on the ice beaver trap and some of that ice was 12 14 inches thick on some of them beaver ponds but you know the the methods that he's showing you here the methods that he uses for that baited conibear the way he you know he's the first person I mean we were baiting conibears back when I was 12 years old my dad and myself we bait conibears we put the bait on the trigger and the triggers like this you're hoping the 330 is not going to snap off on your hands and going and filming that with him, it just it was like, wow, that makes sense. You put that uh, bait right on that one jaw, and you wire it right to it. When those animals come through, they grab it and pull themselves right through the trap, and you have them there the next morning. And that is pretty much one of the best, if not the best, under ice beaver techniques that you can ever use if you have freezing conditions. So Johnny showed us that, and uh, he's got some more knowledge for us here as we get to So preseason work and marking runs and channels, it, yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna make a big difference in your catch, and especially locating your bank does. If nothing else, and you have the time, get out there before the, the freeze comes and locate all your bank does. Now some colonies will have a lot of bank does in them, and it all depends how many, you know what, how much bank you got around the pond and a lot of no, number of things. But you give them ponds sometimes that virtually got old colonies that have virtually dozens and dozens of bank dugs. And you got to realize that when you're looking at them in the fall or in the summer, it's not like what they're going to look like in, in the winter when you get a foot of ice or six inches of ice even. Now you get a foot of ice, that puts a lot of those dens that look so good to you that they're using in the summer are gonna be froze out. They're gonna be froze out completely. And when you're looking for dens, only pick the deepest dens you can find. Pick out one or two of the deepest dens you can find. And I mean three or four foot deep. Those are the ones you're gonna, those are the only ones that bothers to mark. You know, the rest of them, maybe if you're in a, an area a little further south where you're only working with a couple inches of ice, it's a whole different ball game. But up here in the north, where you get a, a foot of ice, only pick your, your one or two main dens. And I believe in keeping it simple. This is what works for me, what works the best for me, and it's what I use. And uh, I've caught thousands and thousands of beaver under ice. And uh, many years I've, I've caught two and 300 beavers through the ice. So what I haven't told you probably is because I don't consider of any value to tell you that, but uh, the methods I've shown you here is what I use myself and they work, they work well for me. And uh, I suggest you watch this 
video two or three times because I think you're going to pick up on a few little points that you didn't pick up for the first time through. And uh, I certainly hope that you'll have a lot of success. Well, that's the end of the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said at the beginning, the way Johnny ties that bait on that body gripper makes that beaver actually pull themselves through the trap. And that method is really second to none when it comes to trapping beaver through the ice. Way better than tying the bait on the trigger or anything else. And if you're trapping in those under ice conditions, you just can't beat that method. If you need any products, make sure you stop by NorthAmericanTrapper.com. We've got pretty much everything that you need to get you started for success when you do go in the field. Proven products equals proven conservation, and we'll see you next time.